and welcome to our next episode of Critical Political Thinking. My name is Corey Camasso, and I'm your host. In today's episode, we're going to be covering the major failures of the presidential administration of the Bidens. We're going to talk about his failures thus far, including the border, the gas, Gaza, Israel, you know, BLM, just about everything that he has touched has basically been decimated, and we're going to go over the details and maybe why these things have come into play. Additionally, we're going to talk about the hero to the BLM movement, uh, Mr. Benjamin Crump. We're going to explain how his master manipulation, his lies, and his deceit have not only lined his pocketbooks, but have lined the pocketbooks of criminals and criminals' families. And we're going to explain why that's not good and how it's going to lead to more problems here in America. Additionally, we're going to talk about CNN and how they continue to cover for one of their heavenly boys of Christopher Cuomo and how he was on an advisory council to Mr. Andrew Cuomo when he was in fact facing sexual misconduct allegations. We're going to talk about what he discussed and how he discussed it and why we feel that not only he but CNN should also be implicated in this matter. We're going to talk about a whole lot in this episode and that's why we took a brief hiatus for about a week so we thank you for sticking with us here at Critical Political Thinking. Stay tuned and welcome to an extremely information-packed episode. My name's Corey Camasso, and this is Critical Political Thinking. Hello, and welcome to another informative episode of Critical Political Thinking. My name's Corey Camasso, and I'm your host. Today's episode, we're going to talk about the major failures of the Biden administration. It's a little over 100 days and pretty much about 100 things that have been an extreme detriment to the country. We're going to start with the one thing that most media companies have just basically pushed off and blamed on the Trump administration and said that, you know, it was the policies in place from the Trump administration that led to this catastrophic influx of uh, migrants to the border. Wrong. 100% wrong. And as the media continues to lie, continues to manipulate, and continues to push a false narrative and a false agenda, we're going to tell you the truth. The truth of the matter is, this goes back to the debate stage when Joseph Biden clearly stated, if he becomes president, you can come to the border, rush to the border. We'll give you 100 days to get into the country. 100 days, 100 days. If you don't recall that, we'll be happy to share the link in the description below so you can see the truth and exactly why the coyotes and everybody started to put these plans in place to start shipping children and drug mules together in an effort to get them across the border safely. And now what do we have? We have a ton of drug mules that have made their way across the country and then we're stuck with the children. And I'm not saying stuck with the children in a negative connotation. It's terrible the position that the family must be in to allow their child to come across the border by themselves or in the hands of, in this case, drug dealers gang members, you know, MS-13 and the likes of such. And what has the Biden administration done to counter this? Oh, don't come. That's it. Don't come. Instead, what they're doing is now they're allowing them to come. They're giving them places to go. They're transporting them clear across the country, dropping them off in communities and places where, unfortunately, they're not welcome because they don't have the assets available to keep these people protected, safe, housed, the money's not there. And the Biden administration began by asking these areas whether or not they would be allowed to come there. And as they're being declined, they're still sending them anyway. This has happened in Tennessee. This has happened in Idaho. It's going all across the United States. And the Biden administration is pushing it across. And it's not just border towns problems anymore. We're seeing migrants popping up all across the country. And this is good and this is bad. It's good because we do need to have immigration. That's what this country was built on. That's what makes this country so great. But there has to be checks and balances. There has to be a system and a process in place. And the Biden administration has completely dismantled everything that the Trump administration had done to build our border better. He built a wall. So many people claim that that was racist. Why is it racist to protect your country? Why is it racist to keep your country safe? There's nothing racist about America. America welcomes everyone with open arms if they have the qualifications necessary. Not just cross the border, do whatever you want to do because now Biden's president. 
That is a major failure by the Biden administration and the likes of Jen Psaki, the biggest liar that I've ever seen take that office. She has not done a thing positive in that press secretary office. She lies, she manipulates, and she just passes the buck. We'll circle back, we'll circle back. I, I should suggest that you speak to this person or speak to this person. Well, how come when people spoke with Kaylee McKenney, she had all the answers. She had her magical binder and she didn't make you go and call, you know, Department of Se Homeland Security. She had the answer in place because that's what a press secretary does. That's what a good press secretary does. That's what somebody who has a grasp on the administration and isn't just there to be a puppeteer and an additional liar in a play of 30, because we all know that Joe Biden is not our president. Kamala Harris is not our president. It is a whole conglomerate of liberals, and I'm talking socialist Marxist liberals that are deriding and running this country into the ground. They are pushing climate change as if that is the primary problem in America, when we clearly know that has nothing to do with just America. And yet now it has become solely America's problem, and we will be at a detriment if the liberals are allowed to continue. They're pushing this climate change, they're pushing this infrastructure plan that has nothing to do with infrastructure. Instead, what it is, is a continuation of the Joe Biden welfare plan to continue to force Americans to become dependent on a centralized government rather than become the industrial, entrepreneurial Americans that, to live the American dream. They want a bunch of robots and bees. They want people just to continuously fill the hive with honey and protect the queen bee. That's it. You don't have a life. You don't need extra money. You don't need any anything. Just barely enough to get by your $15 quote unquote minimum wage for all jobs, even if the job doesn't have a profit margin to pay that, it's now being required. So that's going to do away with so many small businesses. And this is just some of the things that are going on within the first hundred days. Additionally, you have such a weak president that now, not only are foreign relations going to hell, in, for example, Gaza, Israel, you know, they knew that under the Trump administration, Gaza at least, knew that Donald Trump would protect and refill the Iron Dome and assist and give the Israeli people, which are, in fact, regular citizens like you and I, who are now being attacked by terrorist organizations within Gaza. Now, I'm not saying everyone in Gaza is a terrorist, but what I'm saying is in Gaza, these terrorists are allowed to reign supreme, to build their missiles, to do whatever it is that they please, and then reign terror on countries that they see fit. And the Palestinians don't want to just attack the Israelis. They don't want their land. They want them dead. They want them eradicated from Earth. And that is why it is so important for America to take a firm stand. And instead, what you have is Joe Biden forcing a ceasefire. Now, you know, America looks and says, oh, that's great. He got them to stop fighting. He stopped them to stop shooting. Okay, sure. What he did was he gave Gaza the idea that they won, that Israel had to give in. They had to stop fighting back and that everybody just had to behave. Instead of giving Israel the opportunity to finally put the final nail in the coffin of the terrorists that have been raining terror upon their country. Instead, the Biden administration just put a Band-Aid on it because that's all the Biden administration is capable of doing. They have no foreign relations. Biden has no interest in protecting Israel, none whatsoever. He may have come on and said, we'll refill this, we'll do this, we'll do that. But at the end of the day, he is following the playbook of the squad. And the squad clearly said that they are not pro-Israel. So we need to understand where we stand as an American people. We need to protect citizens and people, not just foreign governments that we have assets based on. And yes, that's you know how countries and businesses and all these things work, yes. Don't get me wrong. There are lines that we need to cross and there are fine lines that we need to walk. But at the same time, they are hiding behind this fake support, which I know, and I'm pretty sure most Americans with half a brain know, the Biden administration will not follow through with. So make sure you're paying attention. See how long this ceasefire takes place. Because what you now have is you have a ton of countries out there that see one of the weakest presidents in the United States of all time, if not the weakest presidential candidate, or I should say presidential administration of all time. So much so that even Russia has attacked our gas pipelines. 
they attacked our pipelines. They hacked in and shut down the business side of our pipelines, therefore causing us to have to go and shut down the pipeline. And what does that do at a time when Biden has already screwed our fuel sources and our foreign and domestic uh, oil production? He shut down the Keystone pipeline. So that's one already down. Then you have the additional pipeline shut down. So what do we have? We now have a huge gas influx at a time when Americans are already struggling. Yeah, we have a little bit of disposable income from the 26% of American funds that they produced in the past year with no backing. Did you know that 26% of all American money currently was produced within the past year? New money too, not just reproduction of destroyed or damaged money. This is brand new money that they printed. Why did they have to print that much? Well, stimulus, trillions and trillions of dollars in you know relief. All of this wasn't backed. We're going into a huge depression. And now we have one of the weakest presidents ever in charge. Where does that leave us? What do we do from here? How can we as Americans say that we rely and trust the Biden administration to get us through what's about to happen? You know, he's claiming he's the reason that the Israelis, you know, got into this peaceful talks. Well, guess what? I don't think that was a positive move, and nor does the ambassador from Israel. Israel, He clearly doesn't believe that. As a matter of fact, he thinks that they should have had a better opportunity to put that final nail in the coffin and to ensure that these Gazan terrorists aren't going to just come back and do it again. And I kind of think that's what Biden is relying on, that failure to have peace in the Middle East, because then he can go back in, get more oil, do whatever it is that he needs to do. But at the end of the day, he's failed America, not only on the border, not only on gas, not only on the economy, not only on everything, even racial matters. Let's talk about some racial matters. You know, we have the Biden administration jumping the gun constantly, allowing people like Maxine Waters to literally take the Chauvin trial and flip it on, on its head, where if those 10 jurors actually, before we know the facts about the 10 juries, where one of the jurors is in fact a BLM major supporter attending Sharpton rallies, MLK rallies, even though he lied on his report saying he never was at any of these protests or rallies, he clearly was. He was, what would you say, a biased jury. And that is one of the rights of an American to have an unbiased jury. And he didn't have one. Additionally, you had Maxine Waters going out there saying, you know, if we don't get a specific type of verdict, there's going to be hell to pay. So all these people in the town where all the hell would have been paid are these jurors knowing that their town would have burnt down. That's not a fair trial. He's going to get another trial. On top of that, you have downright, in my opinion, personally disgusting individuals preying on the families of criminals who were unfortunately killed at the hands of police officers while committing felonious, felonious acts. They were attempting to injure officers. Let's take Andrew Brown, for instance. You have Andrew Brown. Now, you had Benjamin Crump come out in front of national news just so he can get his, of course, he's going to jump right on it and try to get a lawsuit from the city and make more millions of dollars for himself, even though he doesn't give a damn about the BLM community. Because if he did, wouldn't he be donating that money back? Wouldn't he be using that and helping BLM orchestrate and spread that money out rather than buying multi-million dollar homes for themselves? No. It's all about being selfish and getting as much as they can and monopolizing on this lawsuit situation where they're going to literally take every person, every person that is a criminal running from the authorities, using their vehicle. So let's take Andrew Brown, for instance. You had this Benjamin Crump come out and clearly state he was an unarmed black man killed at the hands of the police, shot in the back of the head. Blah, 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 instigating a riot. Wait a minute. Isn't that kind of what they got Trump for? Instigating a riot by his words? Causing people to riot? <gasps> and wait a minute. Trump didn't lie. Trump didn't even say anything wrong. Whereas you have Benjamin Crump lying through his teeth, clearly stating the man was unarmed. Well, that's funny because last time I checked, a motor vehicle is a deadly weapon. That means he's not unarmed. Maybe he didn't have a handgun. As a matter of fact, he had something more deadly, a large vehicle that he was at the, the, uh, the wheel of. He was in full control of, eluding officers. These officers came off a clearly marked police SWAT vehicle. They had their guns drawn. They stated who they were. They told him to stop. He refused to do so. He pointed his vehicle at officers, stepped on the gas pedal with no regard for the lives around him. 
obviously they had to fire. They didn't know where that man was going to go. They didn't know if he was going to hit some poor little child in a playground. They didn't know if he was going to drive down the street and just hit everybody just to elude the police because this man just tried to hit officers. Who was next? They had no choice but to fire at the man who had a deadly weapon and was willing to use it against not only officers but possibly civilians. So then you have this man standing in front of crowds, instigating riots, claiming lies, manipulating just to fill his pockets. How is that not disgusting? Can you please explain that to me? How is it that that man can stand there in his million dollar suits, just standing there lying and manipulating, instigating, taking his people, the African American community, riling them up and causing further division and hate. And you call this man a hero? I call him a criminal. And I think all Americans should look at these people and realize what they really are criminals. We have to stop allowing these people to manipulate and push the truth. We can't allow it, people. The media will continue to lie, manipulate, and cover. And Governor Cuomo is a prime example. Let's take Governor Cuomo, for example. You have Governor Cuomo, a man who has multiple sexual misconduct allegations. And you can see it. I can see it. He's an old school Italian. Very handsy, very touchy, thinks he's God's gift to earth. You can hear it in the way he talks. Do you really think he wouldn't go up to a woman and do the things that he's alleged to have done? And by how many women? How many does it take for you to understand? You had one person say one thing about Donald Trump and the whole world went to hell. As a matter of fact, he said it to another individual. Grab him by the what? Okay, that's boy talk. Whereas you have Cuomo actually making women uncomfortable, touching, hugging, kissing them, and putting them in positions where they are meant and felt out of place. And that is not right. And a lot of times that happened in the workplace, that happened at you know, work meetings, you know, dinners after work, whatever the case may be. But then, you know, you don't have proper coverage. As a matter of fact, you have his brother on CNN actually on an advisory panel for him coaching him along how to get out of it. How is that okay? How is somebody in mainstream media allowed to take such a conflict of interest and instead of covering the facts, CNN lied, manipulated, and helped cover up Chris and Andrew's interactions. It's disgusting, despicable, and I don't understand how a single American can ever trust a word out of the likes of CNN again. Don Lemon, Chris Cuomo, they're jokes. They have no idea what journalism is. Instead, they are agenda-pushing, narrative-pushing, entertainment professionals. And I, I, I kind of choke at saying professionals because to be a professional, you actually have to respect and understand the position to which you, you do. And I don't think they have any respect for journalism. I don't think they have any respect for the camera in front of them. As a matter of fact, if they did have respect for the people and those watching them, they wouldn't lie, manipulate, and push a false narrative. They wouldn't continue to push racial hate. Instead, they would figure out ways to bring us together. That's not the point. That's not what they want. There is no clicks in togetherness. There is no happiness in peace because they don't get any money out of it. Nor does the democratic government. If there's nothing for them to save you from, what is the point of having them? They have no power at that point. They saw the power that they could have through COVID. They saw how much <laughs> it could do for them. They saw so much so that they took an election and did whatever they felt necessary to quote unquote legally take that election and put it in the hands of the Biden-Harris administration. And as a direct result, our country is now in peril. And the majority of Americans don't even agree with the majority of the actions taken by the Biden administration. And yet the media has no choice but to not cover it because they put him there. They're all at fault. They are all to blame. This whole election was manipulated by the media, social media, and big tech. So much so that it makes Americans truly question whether or not we can ever trust the integrity of an election again. Hell, here in Luzerne County, we just had the primaries and there was still yet another issue on a Dominion software system where they mislabeled and mistitled the primary ballot. Everybody's ballot, whether you're Republican or Democratic, was printed up as a Democratic ballot. And that's the fail-proof Dominion system. 
right here in Luzerne County. Look it up, people. It happens every election. This is one of the most corrupt counties in the United States. We had the Cash for Kids scandal where judges were putting children in jail and prison just to profit. It's despicable. It's disgraceful. And it's about time Americans wake up. Wake up. See what's happening to your country. Pretty soon you're not even going to own the land that your family worked to own. It's not going to be yours. They're going to take everything back from us. They're going to force us into positions where we'll have no choice but to fight back. Ladies and gentlemen, the Biden administration has put us on a path to hell. And the public social media giants are helping. They're allowing disgraceful individuals like Cuomo to continue to operate. You know, you have someone that put how many countless lives in peril and dead just to save his own ass. You know, in the nursing home scandals, where did that go? Why is that no longer a topic? You know, had this been any GOP member or governor or representative or senator, they would have been crucified. And that alone should show you the clear, unjust bias. We no longer have a choice in news. We now have to fend for ourselves. That's the reason we created this channel. We're trying to give you the opportunity to find the truth to find the lies and the manipulation behind each and every one of these stories presented by the mainstream media. It's disgusting and it's disgraceful. We hope you learned a lot today about the Biden administration, the failures on the first 100 days and how we are not in good shape, despite what the Biden administration will plead. You know, we've got so many vaccines in so many people's arms. We have no idea what we're putting in people's arms. How does that sound? You know, there are so many side effects. Now they're talking about booster shots. You're gonna be doing this for the rest of your lives, people. The rest of your lives. And it's funny because, you know, this came out of nowhere. And yet all of a sudden, the people that are benefiting the most are the people that created it. China is the only country to profit from COVID. And yet they're the people that created it. Hmm. Funny. And yet the Biden administration has no inkling of care to find out why, who, how. They're just letting the WHO and the CDC lie, manipulate, and do whatever they need to do to continue to profit and continue to push power towards Fauci and the dancing clowns at the CDC. People, it's a disgrace. My name is Corey Camasso. This is Critical Political Thinking. We are a non-paid, non-monetized channel. Obviously, YouTube finds us a threat because we are sharing the truth, which is against their whole entire narrative. So we rely on amazing viewers like you to share our video. Please like, please subscribe, please rumble, and please ring the notification bell so that you can be made aware every time we share the truth. We'll continue to bring you the truth no matter what. Even if it costs us every cent we have, it is our duty to allow the American people to see what's really going on. And we hope you learned a lot today. You know, obviously between Crump being a criminal, Andrew Cuomo being a sexual deviant, Joe Biden destroying America, the Democrats, the squad tearing apart our country, all other countries looking at America like the joke that the Biden administration truly is instead of the ama amazing Americans that we truly are. We need to fix this and we need to do it now please visit www.criticalpoliticalthinking.com today to join our Critical Political Thinkers Club. Get yourself a Critical Political Thinkers mug, t-shirt, mask, they're all free, all by donating today to help our channel continue to grow and provide you content like you've seen today. Again, my name is Corey Camasso. Thank you so much for watching Critical Political Thinking. Stay tuned for future episodes, and like I said, please like and subscribe so you can hear them the second they are released, and visit our website for exclusive daily content. Thank you so much for watching Critical Political Thinking. My name is Corey Camasso. God bless America.